<laughs> Are you sick? Don't you dare sneeze on me. Do you know how far your germs can travel? The big honkin' sneeze you produced just traveled a greater distance than previously thought. Some five to two hundred feet further, in fact. Watch as those tiny neon droplets fly out in slow motion. Our producer, under a black light, is splattered. Look at this. Potential germ splatter from that sneeze all over his body. That the smaller droplets that emerge in a cough or a sneeze have associated gas clouds that keep their potentially infectious droplets aloft over a much greater distance than you might expect. You can see how much our germs spread through the air when we cough. <coughs> what we're trying to do is teach the basic concept that if a patient exhales, coughs, sneezes, hums, or sings, that they are projecting these respiratory particles. Researchers in Finland created this 3D digital model to show how fast and how far wow. a single cough can spread the tiny particles that carry the coronavirus through a typical grocery Whoa. store. Look at that. Did the spray reach them from twice as far away? And we're gonna simulate this sneeze now from eight feet. Achoo! Back under the black light. Look at the splatter we see from our simulation especially up here around the face. Normally you hold about half a liter of fluid in your lungs. So when you sneeze, you're able to spray as much as a water bottle's worth of mucus into the air around you. It shoots out of your mouth in the form of moist, germ-infested clouds. That walks by you or you walk by them and they cough in your face, then maybe that would you know, show that. Yeah, that's not a good place so to that's be. That's the wrong place. Yeah. To be. And previously realized, so that means they may travel as far as 25 Feet. The tiny airborne particles can spread through coughing, sneezing, or even just talking in an invisible cloud. Unrestricted sneeze can come out at over 100 miles an hour and actually has been clocked at 200 miles an hour. The multi phase, turbulent, buoyant bubble mixes with the ambient air, creating swirling eddies that keep smaller drops of ejected spittle suspended for greater lengths of time than larger drops traveling up to 35 meters per second. Once that cloud hits the air, it expands, breaking up into snotty strings, then a series of different sized droplets, all trapped in a turbulent gas cloud. That white powder flying out of Puff Daddy's mouth glows under a black light, so you can get a sense of just how many particles from that cough could that end up on you. One brave group at MIT discovered that the biggest droplets can travel up to two <laughs> meters, about the distance between your desk and two desks away. But most other droplets, those travel much farther, up to eight meters. That's about five desks away. Right there, stop. Right, right here. Really? Seriously? It can travel this far? That's a heck but of a But it can sneeze. travel 25 feet, so be mindful of that. <laughs> the germ-infested gas cloud is less dense than the air around it, so it rises upwards, right to where ventilation systems and other people's unsuspecting noses and mouths await. The minute droplets, 10 to 100 micrometers in diameter, frequently remain aloft long enough to make it to that ventilation duct in the ceiling above you. Says in an office setting, some sneezes and coughs can reach eight desks away. Even though these are relatively smaller droplets, they're probably still teeming with harmful pathogens like the flu virus. Even worse, depending on the ventilation, they can spread through a room in just a few seconds and remain suspended for up to 10 minutes. Dispelling these um, part respiratory particles during a cough, the individuals that have the potential to be exposed don't necessarily need to be in direct eyesight with that person. They can be in another part of an area that is sharing the same air. Now, if you happen to notice someone around you sneeze or cough, you can hold your breath as you move out of range. But during the flu season, that might not even be enough because there are danger zones everywhere. That cloud can linger for several minutes and spread quickly over store shelves. Look at that. And people nearby end up breathing it in. So Especially on surfaces like desks, doorknobs, and steel handrails. Turns out the flu virus has been found to survive for 24 hours on a steel surface. You touch that surface and don't wash your hands before eating, you may have just gotten infected. Cover your cough, cover, you know, cough into your arm, into your elbow, um, or away from you, not yeah. directly in somebody's face. Or if you cough in your hands, then all that now is on your hands for you to touch others or touch the surfaces. I hope if you're watching and you're trying to decide whether or not you should put on a mask, this should show you why. So the next time you're not feeling great 
and you're sneezing up a storm, just think about your poor coworkers and take a sick day for yourself and for them. So six feet social distancing isn't going to work because peak exhalation speeds can reach 100 feet per second for sneezes. The gas is emitted when a person coughs, sneezes, or exhales. It shows that the particles mostly drop three to six feet. But then the study suggests that droplets of various sizes are trapped in a turbulent gas cloud, allowing them to travel up to 26 feet or further. Turbulent gas cloud, it shows in this diagram, and then the drops fall continuously depending on weight and other factors. The most visible drops would fall within six feet. Surgical mass not recommended for preventing infection because droplets can enter through voids in the mask as you can see in this diagram. If you actually Google search on how far a sneeze droplets can travel, scientists have learned that smaller particles suspended in the gas bubble can travel as far as 200 feet away from the person who sneezes. Moreover, the germs can easily travel far enough to find their way into ventilation systems, thereby extending their journey even further. Most doctors, nurses, researchers, scientists will say that if you're going to cough, don't cough in your hands because then you're going to like get it all germs and stuff to uh, cough into a tissue or cough into your shoulder but I find when you cough into your shoulder or whatever it's still like particles are gonna go everywhere like if they actually had some sort of machine that they could see like they said like that when the guy coughs like that dummy if they could put an elbow up like that just to see how much of the powder disperses everywhere I honestly think the best way to cough is by going like this with your shirt <laughs> and that way all the particles are going to be stuck inside you know like in your shirt you know because if you're going to cough like this you cover your nose you're going to cover your nose your mouth and you like put it around and then you cough and what that's going to do is keep it all inside it might come out the bottom of your shirt but then it's going to come out the bottom rather than coughing in your shoulder or in like a, a, a sneeze like if you have like a cloth like this let's just say this was like a napkin and i go <coughs> i can still feel the particles escaping around the sides so probably particles would be going everywhere and they should actually do research into that scientists whoever should actually do that take that dummy cover it with like a cloth see if the particles go through and it, like even if you have a cloth like this i'm pretty sure <laughs> yeah i can feel my air through the cloth so even going like uh, like that like with a cloth it's going to go through into your hand but at least with your shirt it's going to like stay inside so i don't know they, they need to do a little bit more research on like how to properly cover yourself but the best way is that if you're sick stay the heck home you shouldn't be out in public yeah i came across this and i thought i'd educate and inform all of you that a sneeze a cough even just like talking or just breathing those particles create gas clouds that can travel up to on over 200 feet so pretty much you want to wear some sort of mask the surgical mask still can breathe in the particles but wearing something is better than nothing what you want is something that's going to 100 percent seal around your nose and your mask 100 percent seal as well as you want to cover your eyes because it can go into your eyes the particles i'm not sure about your ears i'm pretty sure it probably could go into your ears but then also uh they were saying if you have like a cut on your hand like i probably do here yeah i got like a cut on my hand and those particles are traveling and they land in your cut it goes into your bloodstream you're getting infected too so you're gonna want to like really take this seriously and protect yourself and that's why in like china and other countries you people you see people in like full body suits like full like you know hazmat suits and people are like wow they're like you know they're crazy but it's it's the way viruses can get into your system and stuff like that and you got to take it seriously because you know if a virus has a mortality rate of 30 percent or 50 percent and you get infected that means that you have a 50 percent of chance dying that's like you know flipping a coin and it's either you live or you die and that's that's pretty serious so you, everyone should take this seriously so please let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below please do me a huge favor and click that like button as well as that subscribe button down here it should say like subscribe in a little box you just click that it takes two seconds it really helps me out a lot and i really appreciate it and if you can also just share this with your friends and family and everybody else you know just to educate them and inform them that a sneeze or a cough can travel more than six feet and 
and that we need to start taking this seriously. People that are sick need to stay home. If they're out in public, they need to be publicly shamed or whatnot. And also, like, if you're going to cough or sneeze, at least try to cover yourself, like, properly like this or wear a mask to protect everybody else. So, yeah, let me know in the comments below. Please like the video and subscribe. It helps me out a lot, and I really do truly appreciate it. And I do read all your comments, by the way, snoochy boochies. So thanks for watching, everyone. Stay home. Stay safe. God bless you all. Take care, and peace out.